get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me. It's in my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to New Week Bible Class here at the Maple Avenue Church of Christ. We're so glad to have you. We want you to pause for a second and share this. Share this text message, email, however you choose to share it. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and send it through Facebook Messenger. Share it to your page. Let's just invite everybody in to tune in with us today as we have a great class. We have a really, really, really good class in store for you today. We're talking about allowing room for grace and growth. Part three, allowing room for grace and growth, part three. So um, we talked about grace for two consecutive weeks. Today will be the last week that we deal with grace. But we talked about how in the first week, how we have to allow room for grace to enter into our lives. Right. And so we talked about how that is so important for us to make room for grace to enter into our lives. And we talked about how sometimes pain can cause us to recognize that we need grace. When we go through some things, sometimes it makes us realize that, you know what, I need God's help. Um, we also talked about in week two how God made room for grace to come into the entire world. And if God made room for grace to come into the entire world, then we ought to make some room for grace to come into our lives. But today we're going to be talking about how we got to give grace to other people. It's going to be a good one today. So we know that we got to give grace to ourselves. We know that God gave grace to us. But today we're going to be talking about how we got to give grace to other people. Right. And this is going to be so exciting. I can't wait. Um, let's really quickly do a last week recap. So uh, last week we talked about how sin is just something that everybody struggles with. If you are a Christian and you tell me you don't struggle with sin, uh, we need to have a talk. Right? So sin is something that everyone struggles with. No one is exempt uh, from the struggle of sin. We talked about how there was a time when we were dead in our sin and we were dead in our, the trespasses of our sin. But God brought grace into the world through Christ Jesus. And it is through Jesus Christ that I am justified, that you are justified. And it is through Christ that we get grace. Right. And so that's what we dealt with on last week, how God gave mankind the opportunity to change the essence of our nature through grace. God knew we needed grace before we knew we needed grace. So that's what we dealt with on last week. Um, but today we're going to be looking at somebody in the Bible by the name of Jonah. Real interesting story here. Somebody in the Bible by the name of Jonah. Really quickly, I want to cover again what grace is. Grace is undeserved favor from the Lord. But we're going to be looking at Jonah today. And Jonah had a lesson on grace. He had a lesson on grace. And we're going to look at how he dealt with it. But to but, you know, what we're looking at in the book of Jonah, because it's only four chapters. What we're going to be looking at in the book of Jonah is chapter three and chapter four. So to give you a little bit of background on chapter one and chapter two. Well, uh, Jonah was given a task by God to go preach to the city of Nineveh. Nineveh was a very sinful city. Nineveh was sin city before Las Vegas was sin city. Nineveh was just one of those cities where you really, if you didn't have no business there, you really didn't go there, right? Um, and so Jonah, he avoided this responsibility to go and preach to these people, and he fled to Tarshish. He got on a boat, and he tried to run away from the responsibility that God gave him. Eventually, uh, Jonah's rebellion caught up with him because, as we all know, you can run from God, but you can't hide and eventually God will find you and eventually you will have to do God's will. So eventually Jonah's rebellion caught up to him and God prepared a fish uh, to swallow Jonah whole. While Jonah was inside of the fish, he said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Jonah repented and was vomited out of the fish. All right. And so now after knowing all of that, we wind up in Jonah chapter three. And we're going to pick up at verse one and we're going to go through verse number four. Now, the Bible says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city and preach to it the message that I tell you. 
So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Let's keep reading here. So that was Jonah chapter three, one through four. Let's read five through 10. The Bible says, so the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way, from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from disaster that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Wow. So I want to talk about something um, today as we move forward. I want to talk about giving grace to others, giving grace to others. And that's kind of what we're going to cover today for the entire lesson, uh, giving grace to others. So when Jonah repented, God told Jonah, I want you to go back and do what I told you to do the first time. I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and I want you to preach to them. And so when Jonah did that, he went back to Nineveh and he preached destruction and uh, he, he wanted God to punish them. But the king, when he heard the word of the Lord through Jonah, he proclaimed a fast and took heed to the word that Jonah spoke. One good point that we ought to pick up is you ought to take heed to the word of God when it is preached to you. Sometimes we can get so focused in who is preaching the word that we miss the message of the word that is being preached. The Bible does say, how shall they hear without a preacher? But I want to tell you something that you can miss the message when you get so caught up in the messenger. When the king heard the word of the Lord through Jonah, he proclaimed a fast and he repented. He, re he first repented for himself. You see, the difference between Jonah and the king was Jonah took some time to repent. When God gave Jonah a word, Jonah ran. But when the king got the word through Jonah, the king repented right away. And see, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters, is the choice is always up to you. The choice is always up to you. When God shows you that you're wrong, when you get the word of God through whoever you get it from, it's up to you to repent and change your life. God does give us free will. When the king heard the word of the Lord through Jonah, he first repented for himself. And he fasted for himself. And then he proclaimed a fast for the entire city. Because he wanted not just himself to get grace, but the king wanted the entire city to get grace. And I just maintain that that's the kind of leadership we all should have. Where the, the leader doesn't just want himself to get it, but the leader wants everybody to get it. And in this text, you're going to see that the king could have just prayed for himself. The king could have just hoped that he was saved, but the king didn't just hope for himself, but he did it for the whole city. He prayed for himself. He fasted for himself. And then he issued a decree for the entire city. He said, no one will eat. No animal will eat, but everyone will repent and turn away from their violent ways so that the Lord can pull us out of this situation. The king said, who is it to say that God won't save us? The king had faith that if everybody repented and turned away from their violent ways, that God would save them. See, what we got to know is that the king knew that grace was God's decision. Mm. 
Grace was God's decision. But we got to remember as Christians, brothers and sisters, it's not our decision who gets grace. But grace is ultimately God's decision. And another thing while I'm here, you ought to want everybody to get some grace. Amen, somebody. Because you are not the author of grace or the distributor of grace, but that is God's decision. That is God's power. The king wanted grace for the whole land. As Christians, we should want others to receive some grace. You know, it's very, very difficult for us to want people to receive grace who have done us wrong. But as Christians, brothers and sisters, we can't go eye for eye or tooth for tooth, because if that's the case, what makes us different from anybody else? But we as Christians have to want to give grace even to others who do us wrong. Say amen when you can. Giving grace to others is what we're talking about today. Let's keep going. I want you to see something here. Let's go over to Jonah chapter four, uh, verses one through four. Because like I said, this, this king, he wanted grace to be bestowed on everybody in the land. As Christians, we got to have the same mindset. Listen, not that Jonah had, but the king had. You see, because see, the king wanted forgiveness to be given to everybody. All right. And as Christians, we should want God to forgive everybody. Sometimes we want God to punish people. It is not your choice to determine who God punishes. But if anything, your prayer should be, Lord, have mercy on them. Because you know that what? God has had some mercy on you. Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. New King James Version is what I'm reading, by the way. Uh, the Bible says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore, now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? I want you to underline that. Is it right for you to be angry? Um, let's continue this. Giving grace to others. You see, Jonah wanted God to punish Nineveh. And he was irate that God was about to give them grace. Can you see yourself in this text? Can you see yourself in this text? Because we've all been where Jonah was. We've all been there where we wanted God to really punish somebody. We wanted God to really give somebody what they gave us, but it worked the other way around. And it made you so mad and it made you so upset because you're saying, God, I thought you were going to punish them because I felt some pain and I wanted them to feel some pain. And God reminded you, is it right mm, for you to be angry? And what you have to ask yourself is, is it right for me to be angry that God is not dealing with somebody the way I want God to deal with them? Is it right for me to be angry that God is giving grace to somebody who I feel may deserve punishment? It is not right for me to be angry. You know what? When you get angry over what God is doing for somebody else, you got too much time on your hand. When you're getting angry over what God isn't doing for somebody else, you got too much time on your hand. Because when I sit back and I think about all the things that God has kept from me, and when I sit back and I think about all the things that God is doing for me, I don't have time to be angry. I don't have time to be bitter about what he's doing for nobody else because I'm saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm saying, Lord, thank you for helping me. You see, we got to start being thankful for what God has done for us. The problem is we're not thankful because thankfulness spills over into other areas of our life. You see, when I'm thankful for what God is doing for me, I'll be thankful for what God is doing for you. When I'm happy that God has forgiven me, Lord have mercy, I'll be happy that God 
has forgiven you. But when I'm still bitter, when I'm still angry, when I'm still mad, I can't even recognize the blessings that God has bestowed upon me in our lives. As Christians, we must remember God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. God helps out the ones who are wrong and he helps out the ones who are not wrong. It is God's prerogative. Once again, it is not our responsibility to determine who receives grace. When we talked about grace before we began, we said that grace was undeserved favor from the Lord. So what you, when you understand that grace is something that I don't even deserve, when you understand that you don't deserve it, nothing you do could merit up to grace. Not, no, not, I mean, how many Bible classes you attend, how many Sunday schools you've taught, how many times you fed the homeless, how many times you turn the other cheek. Nothing you do can merit up to the grace that God has given you. So when you realize that, Lord, I didn't even deserve what you gave me. How dare I speak on the grace that you are giving to somebody else? I don't even deserve it. Jonah was mad because Nineveh was receiving grace. We have to be happy that other people are getting grace. Because let me tell you something. If God can give you some grace, then I know he can give me some. I'm happy when God gives other people grace because I know it's some more of it going around. You ought to shout amen. We're getting too happy when people are getting punished and we're not getting happy enough when people are getting grace. I didn't deserve it, so I'm not even judging who gets it. I'm happy when you get it because I need some. Y'all ain't helping me in here. God wants us to be willing to extend grace to other people. And there's somebody this week that you need to give some grace to. There is somebody this week that you need to give some grace to. Somebody has troubled you for months on end, but today God sent this lesson by your house so that you can give them some grace. Somebody has been troubling your spirit for weeks on end, but today God sent this lesson by your house so that you can remove that spirit of anger and realize, you know what? I'm going to give them some grace because God has given me some grace. The amount of grace we receive should allow us to recognize that others need it too. When you think about all the things you thought about, when you think about all the things you've done, when you think about all the things you've said and all the um, and all the grace you received in spite of that, let me tell you something. That ought to make you recognize that somebody else needs some grace too. So when you get mad that somebody isn't getting the punishment you feel like they deserve, ask yourself, is it right for you to be angry? God didn't put us here to distribute justice or punishment, but God put us here on earth to be instruments of love and forgiveness and grace. You see, the world, and we talked about this last week, the world needs to be able to see God through us. And when the world can't see God through us, then we got a serious problem, brothers and sisters. The world has to be able to see God's grace working through us. The world has to be able to see God's love working through us. Is it right for you to be angry? The answer is going to be always no. I'm happy when God blesses you, no matter how mean you were to me. I'm happy when God gives you grace, no matter how nasty you were to me. I'm happy that you're getting some grace. I'm happy that God is bringing you out because I'm hoping that that grace that you receive will change your demeanor. And maybe you will be a nicer person when you get some grace. I'm hoping that when you get some grace, your words will become softer. I'm hoping that when you get some grace, you'll be able to deal with people better. I'm hoping when you get some grace that your attitude will change. I'm hoping that when you get some grace, you'll be better as a person. We ought to wish grace on our enemies and not their downfall. I want my enemies to get some grace because I want my enemies to change. 
I don't want my enemies to remain the same. I want my enemies to get some grace so that they can be better people for the next person that they run into. I want to give some grace to some people in my life. I don't want to hold on to anger. I don't want to hold on to bitter resentment, but I want to forgive somebody. I want to give them some grace because God has given me some grace. It's not just enough to let grace into your life. It's not just enough to know that God has given grace to the world, but what God has given us, we must give to others. This lesson was designed to show that we got to give grace to the entire world and to everybody that we meet. Somebody is watching today and you need prayer because you haven't been giving grace to other people. Um, somebody's watching today and you need prayer because it's hard for you to forgive other people. Uh, and we're going to pray for you. We want you to be able to recognize that you get heaping amounts of grace every day. We want you to realize that you ought to give some of that grace to other people. And we want you to forgive them as you forgive yourself. So we're going to pray for you today. But somebody needs prayer for general things today. Somebody needs prayer for general things, for health issues, for finances, for traveling grace even, uh, for death and loss of loved ones. We're going to pray for you at this time. We're going to pray for you at this time. We want you to put your prayer request in on this lesson. Um, as we get ready to close, put your prayer request in on this lesson if you're watching on Facebook. And we're going to have a, a prayer before we close. And we hope to see you all on Sunday. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the grace you have given us. We thank you for your word. Lord, give us the mind of the king that we read in this lesson and not the mind of Jonah, but give us the mind to repent of our ways and our sins and give us the mind to want grace for others. Give us the mind to want forgiveness for others. Lord, allow us the heart to forgive others who have wronged us this week, who have wronged us last week. Lord, give us the mind and the heart to extend grace to them. And Lord, we're praying for those of us who will be traveling. We're praying for those of us who are experiencing health problems, those of us who are in financial binds, Lord, and those of us who are just going through tough times mentally. Lord, look in on our lives. Lord, for those of us who have lost loved ones due to death, Lord, look in on our lives, heal our hearts, provide us comfort, give us strength, give us serenity once again, Father, and never, never remove us from your love. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen. Allowing room for grace and growth. That was part three. Uh, we're going to get into growth on the next week's lesson. Um, I'm so glad you all tuned in. Once again, share this on your Facebook page, share this in your text messages, share this in your Facebook messenger, share this via email. We love you so much and we hope to see you on Sunday. This Sunday will be Mother's Day. So we're, we're um, thankful for all of the mothers um, all around the world in different churches in different cities. A mother's love is something that can never be replaced. So we hope to honor the mothers this Sunday and we hope to see you this Sunday. May the Lord bless you and may he bless you real well. It's in my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me.